Hi, I'm Scott McLean from TransMusicMastery.com, and in this video, I'm going to explore the Zebra 2 Mod Mapper Modulator component. And I'm going to start here with the initialized patch. So if I just play, it's the familiar patch that we're used to. And what I'm going to do is first set up the Mod Mapper. Now, this is a pretty interesting modulator, and I'm going to modulate the tune because of Oscillator 1 because that is most noticeable as a modulation target. It's something that we can easily discern. So I'm going to right-click on the modulator knob and select MMAP1. So there's actually two Mod Mappers that we can use, and that brings up this component here. Now, right now I'll just leave the amount of mod map modulation on the tune. I'll just leave that at zero and just explain how this interface works. If we click on this plus button, it brings up another window that is in effect a zoom of this window here. And we can interact with this. We can draw on it. And you can see that changes that I'm making here also show up in this display. And this line right here represents the current position uh, within this map, if you will. Now what the map is, is basically 128 steps in this window. So if I select this line over here, in fact, let me get close to zero here. If I bring this one all the way up, you can see that up here in the window, it says number one, and it says number one equals 76. Well, number one corresponds to the step number, and the equals 76. 76 represents the value of step number one. So right now it's 75, 76. I can bring it down to a negative value. So the range is negative 100 all the way to positive 100. And we can pretty much draw any curve we want. There's also some useful editing functions like randomize normalize, straighten, basically just looks at the first one and the last one and draws a line between the two. So things like that. Now we can change the number of steps that are displayed in the map. It can be 128 here or 96, 64, 48, well actually that's 32, 48, 24, 12, and so on. Okay, all the way down to two. In this case, we just have two steps. Now I'm going to start with two just to demonstrate how this thing actually works and what kind of effects, modulation effect we can do, some of them that we can do with this mapping mod mapper. So if I increase the amount here, let's just go 48. So what that means is the mod mapper is going to modulate the tune amount over a 48 semitone or four octave range. Okay, so that would mean that at the plus, at 100, positive 100, we would be, I believe, four octaves higher than where tune is now. And at minus 100, it would be four octaves lower. So an important aspect of this is this key mode. And what that means is each step is mapped to one of the 128 MIDI notes. So with only two steps, half of the notes are going to be using this step value, and then half of the other 128 MIDI notes are going to be using this step value. All right. So if I select this to 12 steps, then because I have 12 steps, each one would be mapped to a semitone. So I could start on a C note, and that corresponds to this step because that's still yellow, all right? So if I hold the C note down and I drag that step value, that's affecting the tune of the particular note that I'm playing at this point. So if I play C, and then if I play the next semitone up, which would be C sharp, Notice how this step is now selected. That means that the incoming note triggered or was mapped to this step in the mod mapper. And I can go to, in fact, for now, I'll just leave them all, I'll just leave them all up here at the maximum value. So what I did there is I played each note 
in the chromatic scale. So I went from C to C sharp. I'll do that again. And in fact, this time I'll bring down the map to 12. So it's only over one octave. I can leave it mod map at zero and it won't affect the tune, but you'll still see how the notes trigger the step here. So I'll play a C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then the next note would be C and it wraps around because C is being mapped to this particular step. All right. Okay, now that's how the key, this mode here works, key, all right, which means that the steps are mapped to a particular key. Now another mode, which is easy to demonstrate, is alternate. I'll demonstrate all of these modes in this video, but the next mode that I'm gonna look at is alternate. Alternate means it's gonna go to the next step on the next note, so, Anytime a note is played, it will cycle through the steps. So I'm going to play the same note and just repeat it, repeat hitting it, and you'll see that this will cycle through the steps. So. All right, so there I played the same exact note pitch, C, and each time I played the note, the mod mapper went to the next step in the map, okay? It doesn't matter if we have 12 here. If I wanted to, I could say I've got 24 steps. And let me just do that. So you can see that it, it will just cycle through the map. And we can go up to 128. All right, and it does the same thing. Now, we can also have the mod mapper uh, be modulated, okay, by like an LFO, let's say. So if I set this modulator to LFO1 and set, instead of alternate, if I'm going to use modulator, I need to set it to a map. It's got to be a map smooth or a map quantize mode. Key and alternate are tied to actual notes, either the MIDI note number or the note being triggered, which is based on alternate. If we're going to use a modulator, you have to select map. Okay, so I'm going to select map quantize. And now we can see that this LFO1 is modulating the position within the map, the step within the map, okay, based on the sine wave. If I set it to triangle, or we could go random, now it's just randomly being selected, all right? Now, interesting things happen when you do this. So if I select, let's go back to, I don't know, let's just try four steps just to make it easier to look at. And I'll leave it at random for now. And now what I'll do is I'll play a note. In fact, I'll increase this mod map to 12 semitones amount. And so now when I hold the note down, it's going to be uh, randomly modulating by this amount, whichever step it happens to land on, the tune during while I hold the note down. So let me do that. Okay, so you can see how that works. Now if I wanted to, I can also have it be a saw up and what that will do is it will basically cycle through and then repeat because it's based on this LFO value, it's ramping up and then it starts over again at the low end. So that's what's happening to this mod map. It just keeps wrapping around. So now if I hold the note down, and if I pitch it up, let's pitch it up to four octaves. two octaves let's say and now if I set I could double the rate of the LFO by setting it to one eighth okay and then we set that to random the LFO type to random Maybe increase our step number to eight. Maybe 
maybe go to 1 16th on the rate. So you can do sort of like a computer transmission, data transmission type sound, like this technique here. Now, another thing we can do is, well, before I move on, the difference between map smooth and map quantize is the transition between the two values. So let me change this to two steps, and I'll just make the difference here extreme. So listen to how it sounds now. In fact, I'll make the time the rate at which the LFO and a sine wave. I'll make the rate one quarter so it's slower. So that's map smooth. It's actually instead of jumping from plus 100 to minus 100 on the amount between these two steps, it smooths out that transition. Okay, If I set it to map quantize it's basically just jumping from whatever value this step is at to the next value. So that's quantize. And now if I switch to smooth, So there's the difference. Now, let's take that off of tune, and instead let's add a filter, VCF1. And here I've set it for uh, mapping the mod map, using the mod map to modulate the cutoff frequency on the filter. So I'm going to bring the filter cutoff down. <laughs> Let's set this to four. And with a one quarter note cycle on the LFO, let's set the LFO type to saw up. That way it repeats. So it starts here, goes through, and then comes back and starts here rather than going back and forth like this. And then now. You can just do crazy modulations like that. Maybe double the speed. Let's try 11. So that's one thing you can do, so modulating the filter cutoff frequency. The other thing we can do if we take it off of that, so clear the modulation on the cutoff frequency, and we can modulate the volume. All right, so if we select mod map here, basically use this sort of like a gate, all right, so because we're modulating the volume. So here the volume would be at its maximum level, and here it would be at its minimum. And it's map smooth versus quantize. So something like that. And then if we increase the steps, we could have 16 or 8 steps, let's say. Let's hear how this sounds.
if we make this a quarter. So this is going to repeat every beat here. And that's really all there is to this mod mapper thing. You could have anything modulated in the map quantize and map smooth modes. Basically, we could have an envelope modulated as well. So if we play a note and if I increase the attack, it's kind of interesting when you have an envelope set to modulate this. If, if I draw, let's draw lines here, you can actually see the attack decay, sustain, and release take effect. What will happen is over the attack time, it will sequence through its steps until it reaches the maximum, and then it will drop back down to wh whatever the sustain level is. So for example, if I turn attack decay and release all the way to zero and sustain, and I hold a note down, it's going to sustain at the minimum step value. If I increase the sustain amount, that determines which step it's going to sustain at. So let me change that. Change that back. So I increased sustain and it went to here. So now what I can do is over this attack time, it will go all the way up to the max and then it'll drift back down. In fact, let me increase the decay. It'll drift back down to the sustain value. In fact, if I minimize the attack, it'll instantly go to the max and then drift back down to the sustain step uh, over this decay time. And same thing with attack. If I increase the attack, then it'll take that time to go to the max. And then increasing the release. Once I release the note, it'll drop back down to the first step. That. So if I had a release here on the amplitude envelope. All right, so now if we use this mod mapper to also modulate the filter cutoff frequency. Just kind of interesting note there, things you can do with this mod mapper. Pretty cool. And I think I've covered all of the modes, how the step interface works, and you can use zoom as well. Don't forget about that. And other than that, just experiment with it and see you know what happens when you hook it up to modulate tune or filter cutoff or any other modulation targets that you want to experiment with. That's it. I'll see you in the next video.